Uh, we're going to start off. Tracy had uh, yeah, some, yeah. some points she wanted to make. Yeah, it's actually just a small topic. I've been reading Bullfinch's Mythology, which is just like a big collection of mythological works. It's a, mm -hmm. an older book. And I picked up a copy a while back and finally just, you know, sat down and started reading from page one on. And so the other night I read a story and I just kind of laughed because I was like, well, what does this sound like, right? And uh, so this is part of a story that deals with Agamemnon, who is a Greek character. Um, there, He's one of those characters that's sort of myth slash legend, you know what I mean? And so it says, after two years of preparation, the Greek fleet and army assembled in the port of Aulis in Boeotia. Here, Agamemnon, in hunting, killed a stag, which was sacred to Diana, who's a goddess, in the uh, Greek pantheon. So the goddess, in return, visited the army with pestilence and produced a calm, which prevented the ships from leaving the port. Calchas, the soothsayer, thereupon announced that the wrath of the virgin goddess could only be appeased by the sacrifice of a virgin on her altar, and that none other but the daughter of the offender would be acceptable. Agamemnon, however reluctant, yielded his consent, and the maiden, Iphigenia, was sent for under the pretense that she was to be married to Achilles. When she was about to be sacrificed, the goddess relented and snatched her away, leaving a hind in her place, and Iphigenia, en enveloped in a cloud, was carried to Taurus, where Diana made her priestess of her temple. So I read this story, and I immediately thought of Abraham and Isaac, that here is this father who has to sacrifice his daughter. This goddess says that's what's required, and then at the last minute, she stops it and pulls the girl away, and then she replaces her with a hind, Whereas, you know, in the Abraham and Isaac story, that he's replaced by a ram. So I thought that was kind of interesting, and I just did a little bit of research on it, and it turned out that um, early references to Agamemnon date back to about the 14th century in Hittite literature. Uh, but as far as this particular story, I don't know that it goes back that far, but it did remind me of the binding of Isaac and um, that's listed in Genesis, and the book of Genesis dates to somewhere around the 5th or 6th century BCE, and that, uh, you know, doesn't mean that that's when the story dates to, sure. but those are, you know, recorded instances of, of expressing those stories, but uh, it, they, they just had such a, an interesting similarity, and I want to point out that it's very important to note that similarities in mythology may or may not be evidence of prior cultural connection. So you can't just assume that they are. Sometimes there's just common realities about being human in a society, and those things are reflected in very similar stories that can crop up independently. So I don't want anybody to think that I'm suggesting that these are somehow culturally related. I haven't looked into it, so I have no idea. But I did invite people at the blog, if they want to do some research on it and post further information, to go ahead and do that. It just seemed like an interesting little... I was not familiar with this particular myth. There's a lot of, there's a lot of stories like that that people will often tie together. And we see this a lot with some versions of the Jesus mythicist crowd, where uh, there's this claim that, oh, the Jesus story is merely a copying of this one or this one and this one, which I think is a, a bit overreaching. I don't see that it's merely that. Uh, some aspects certainly could be. Uh, but I just, for most of these stories, um, it doesn't surprise me that there are similar themes because we're talking about human beings right. with similar you know, thought processes right. trying to address certain issues. Hey, if you want to come up with a a mythology or a narrative that describes the creation or this particular mm -hmm. moral, you know, uh, lesson that you're trying to convey. I find it completely unsurprising that the stories would be similar. You know? Right, yeah. right. That you would never find like similar stories in any culture would be, you know, very weird. Like if if people live on a river, it would be odd to never have a flood story. Yeah. Um, and the uh, the other thing that was interesting is that both of these tales have uh, alternate endings where the subject is actually killed. So. So now we're talking something that correlates a little more with Jephthah <laughs> in the Bible, yeah. where he he promises, "Hey God, if you let me win this war, I'll sacrifice the right. first thing that comes out of my house, and it's his daughter." And well, on the Abraham and Isaac side, they uh, postulated that maybe the the actual killing was too offensive, or became too offensive, or not in vogue, and so it was altered to to say that it, the hand was stayed. 
Um, I, like I said, I didn't go and, and research a ton on, on this particular myth. I just yeah. found it curious, not, not even curious, but just kind of interesting and funny that it reminded me so much of the other tale. All so right. That was, that was it. 